How are we going everybody? We're in another section here. This is our citrus area. I've neglected this area. Well, I haven't neglected it. I just haven't been attending to everything because it's such a big area. You'll see in the background, just give you a rundown. We've got the uh, viburnums, fetinias. Look at that. I've forgotten what they were. Anyway, in the background, the big hedge, uh, the agapanthus, and I started taking all the dead flowers off. Got to cut the roses. We've got a lot of rose hip on there at the moment. We can make a lot of tea. And we've got our catnip. Now, this has died off, uh, perennial. Uh, you'll notice down deep inside, and this is quite common every time, uh, every winter, the, the old growth is gone, seeds fall down, they germinate, new ones come up, and the old plant inside is growing as well. Now, that plant in there, I haven't cut the top old stems off yet last year's growth because I've used it as a bit of a screen or a protection or shield against the frost because we've had some serious frost. So I'm going to cut all this back now. It's time to clean all this up, weed it out. We've got some irises that are about to pop up again. But also our citrus trees over here. You'll see the discolouring, they're yellowing off. So it's time to feed them. I'm pruning this back now with the secateur, folks. And normally I'd use something a bit more robust. And it's not a hedge here. It's actually the hedge trimmer the powered one. So I just come along there and just take them to the ground. You can see the new growth coming up there now. It's been attacked a little bit there. We've got a few nasty pests floating around during winter as well. But you know, no harm to the cat. And this is just going to bounce back and we're going to get the beautiful flowers coming through. And in springtime, the bees will be out in, in search for these beautiful flowers to make some more honey for us. Now, I've done one. I'm not going to do, well, I'll do the other side so we can open up the room, but I'm not going to do the rest for now. Have a look what I'm doing here. I've got the eco butch here. <laughs> and I thought I'd test it out to see what pH level it's at. Let me turn it on. This is the 4-in-1 soil uh, survey instrument. I've got it set on pH, sitting at 4 there. So it's meant to be acidic because if you look at the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the analysis, the nitrogen sitting at 5.7, phosphorus 1.2, and potassium 11.7. So you get lots of flowers with this too. So it'll induce flowering, give it the acidity it needs. So we're going to water that in. But before we do that, we're also going to test the soil first to see where it's sitting at because the yellowing of the leaves now we always say yellowing means the plant's hungry and if it's hungry we've got to feed it all right let's test it out all right so just give it a couple of minutes to settle down and pick up the ph level now if it doesn't go below six uh, in the reading there the soil is neutral or alkaline and hence why it's yellowing off so we need to feed that but let's also check the moisture level and the temperature so the moisture level showing normal here at the moment. And remember one thing about the probe, it's a 200 millimetre length probe. And the measurement, I believe, is actually taken from there, from the end bit there, the tip of it. So we're sitting on the dry, see where we are just below the surface. And as we go deeper, it's hitting normal. And obviously the water goes down with gravity, sinks down. So the deeper we go, it should be wetter. Let's hope. Wet, there we are, see that? So we've just got the wet reading as we come back up it's dry so it's quite dry on the surface and as a citrus tree because it's got a hair like fibrous roots they're very shallow so they sit just below the surface so this tree is quite dry and competing against the catnip irrespective of how what time of year it is especially now with winter you'd expect to be more rain fall and moisture it's damp but it's not wet so the other part that I didn't mention here let me just turn that light back on is the temperature it's at 11 degrees now the thing about 11 degrees folks in the soil that is not a lot is happening this time of the year so as your trees are dormant your deciduous trees go dormant and your citrus trees to some extent are dormant as well they're ripening their fruit but not a lot else is happening the soil is also dormant too now you know composting we love making compost or we try to make our compost and some of the elements or one of the main elements is heat now we need to have the right temperature in the compost bin or uh, bay that you have and so that the actual microbes that create the compost uh, come to life. So they need to sit around 55 degrees Celsius. Now you don't want your soil to hit that sort of temperature, but you definitely need it to be above 11 degrees or 10 degrees where it is at the moment because the microbes don't, are, are, are far less active. So we need our soil temperature to rise and that's only going to happen with the weather heating up. We can't put hot water into the soil. But what we can do in the meantime is populate the microbes by feeding it with great organic matter. So worm castings, chicken manure is what I'm putting in today, EK Butch and Liquid Gold. So we're going to top dress all this now, give it a water and then sit back and watch the green leaves come back to life. And before we take it out, let's check the pH. So 5.5 down deep below and because the roots are shallow, let's check up here what's going on. The nutrients flush through the soil, look at that. The higher we go, the more alkaline it becomes. We are sitting at 7. 
So the surface of the soil is sitting at 7 pH, which is neutral, actually alkaline. And as soon as we go a bit deeper, look, 7.5 there, it's picking up different readings. But as you go deeper, there we go, back down to 6. So obviously any fertiliser you've applied to the garden, in your garden, but like I have here, has gone down deep below, just below the root system. And hopefully the roots are growing down below, but we need to top dress this as well, because you can't have an inert garden bed on the surface and all the activity down deep below where the roots can't reach. So about a handful or two around the base, you don't need a lot of this stuff. This is some chicken manure. You know how I know that is? The dogs love it. <laughs> They've been at it already. So I'm going to put about a third of a bag around this little tree and spread it around evenly. You don't want it too close to the trunk or too heavy around the base of the trunk, like that. And not just over the uh, drip line, spread it out wherever you can. You know, I can't do too much here because I've got little plants everywhere, but that's nice. There we are. And last but not least, give it a drink with Eco Butch and Liquid Gold. So the first batch is sunken in, so you can't water it all at once because it'll just run off. You need it to soak through slowly. So I did one little drench, another one. You can see how it pulls up. That's all you need to do, let it soak through. And if you can, on the third one at least, over the top of your trees. That's if you can reach. A nice drench over the top because it does help feed the tree from the foliage as well. So give your trees a good feed this time of the year, folks. And if you need to check the pH, the best way to do it, and I've used a lot of uh, machines and tools and uh, soil test kits and all things like that, this little unit here is a, is a ripper. Four-in-one soil survey uh, instrument is what it's called. And it has the four elements, the sun factor, heat, moisture, and your pH. And obviously when you need to feed your trees, Use some quality compost or manures, worm castings, and our liquid fertilizers. EK Butcher Liquid Gold, and you find all this on Vasili's Garden website. That's VasiliesGarden.com. From me, Vasili, Maresi. Mm -hmm.